Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. We've got the usual suspects today on the round table. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. <sighs> Mike, the Zen Master Zeno. What's up, Mike? Not much. Uh, it's great to be here and see everybody. It's great. It's great. We've got the technician, the irascible, Eric Peterson. How's it going, Eric? It's going good. Good to be here. Good to have you. Good to have you. And of course, whether you're a Biggie fan, a Tupac fan, he, it doesn't matter to Tate. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. What's up, Tate? Oh, I'm good. Stoked to be on the podcast again. And of course, you know him. You love him. The, the professor, the mini bat, the brain, Scott Todd from landmoto.com, scotttodd.net. And then, of course, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm excited. How are you? Why are you excited? Uh, this, is, this is now like entering into like my favorite few months in the land business, you know, like from now through uh, tax time. This is like my favorite time in the land business because I feel like people have money and they're buying more in my business. Wallets are open. Well, let's just, let's just bring it to the, the panel. Tate. Oh, yeah. Is this your favorite time? Oh, yeah. This, is, this sets the tone for the next year because, like I said, everybody's in the mode of spending money, so might as well spend a little bit with me. Absolutely. Uh, Eric, how about you? Yeah, I mean, the, with the holidays coming up and everything, uh, we definitely offer some special deals. And um, yeah, I think in general, have a history of selling a little more at this time of year. Nice. Zen Master? Totally agree. I also like this time of year because we're winding down on a, you know, a, a, a macro goal of the year and get to reset it. And, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it's a good time of year, you know, love it. Yeah, you know, speaking of, Macro and micro. If you're not watching Nightcap, um, it's every Wednesday or Thursday night. You have to go on the official Land Geek uh, Wealth Creation Mastermind Group. Join. It's on the Land Geek page. And also, if you don't even know what I'm talking about, schedule a call and learn more about our training so you can start building up your passive income without dealing with renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, talk to the Zen master himself, or Scott, the nightcap meister, boss man. How about that? So, Tate, we've got an interesting topic for the roundtable today. Yeah. What, what yeah. do we got? This was a good question. We, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you are involved in our private coaching program, we run what's called office hours. And office hours take place on Monday nights. And typically – it's a hour long conversation where different coaching students will come and they'll kind of do like a quick grill the geeks or Q and a with a coach for that hour. And they'll present certain topics and they'll say, Hey, how would you handle this? It's, it's a really informative hour and it takes place on Monday nights. And last night I had the privilege of uh, putting that on. And one of the topics that came up was regarding the deal of the week. And those of you on this call know that this is something I'm pretty passionate about. I love the deal of the week. I think it's, probably one of the best kept secrets in this land business when done correctly. And the question that people were posing was how much of a discount are you marking down your properties when they get sent to your deal of the week or your buyer's list? And I thought, hey, that's a really good question. I, I shared my opinion, but I kind of wanted to see what everyone on the panel was doing. Are you guys giving a, a sweet little discount for your deal of the week emails that go out every week? What are your thoughts? Mike Zeno, what are you doing? I agree totally. And I've talked to people as well uh, um, about this and, you know, some people were like, you know, not sending any kind of discount. Um, I think this, you know, it's good to have some sort of hook personally. Right. I think that, you know, we, we ask people to be on our buyers list because uh, we want to engage them with deals that, uh, that would not be available to the general public or, or just advanced notice. So sometimes just the fact that there's advanced notice that in itself is a deal before it goes public. But uh yeah, I think if you have you know half off your dog fee or, or low down, anything you can do 
to show them gratitude being on there. So, yeah. it's a number typically, send, no. right? I mean, you can send out, sometimes what we do is send out coupons, like maybe they'll have a couple hundred dollars off and they can use that uh, anyway, you know, towards a down payment or towards a uh, first monthly payment or off the cash price, something like that. But uh, I don't really have a set percentage myself. No, I, I, I wouldn't say, I would say no, not a set number. Not a set number. Um, Eric Peterson, how about you? I definitely don't have a set number. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of different things, um, everything from a dollar down plus a full doc fee to, you know, a reduced doc fee, reduced down payment. Um, sometimes I adjust the terms, the length, the amount of the monthly payment. Um, sometimes I offer a bigger cash discount. I mean, I really do a variety of things. We'll match down payments, um, all sorts of different stuff. And Honestly, I, I really use it um, to kind of experiment with the market and test different things. Um, so, I mean, it really just comes down to what did I buy the property for and what am I comfortable selling it for? And, you know, whatever that number is, I might test the, the market with that. And it could mean that I'm discounting a property by a thousand bucks, or it could mean I'm discounting it by a couple hundred dollars. It really depends on that particular property. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, when you said a dollar down plus the doc fee, um, I used to love doing that type of promotion and, you know, essentially we'd be getting $500 down, but the, the fact that, you know, people saw a dollar down, they, we got our clicks were a lot higher and ultimately, you know, it, it was, it was a way easier way to sell. Now what we did find was that, sometimes those people that put a dollar down ended up defaulting. Not that it was a bad thing, but um, so I really, I really think it's really smart to experiment, use your creativity. And oftentimes we wouldn't even have to discount on the property itself. It was just that hook, um, the low down or the, you know, no doc fee or a half off the doc fee, some type of discount to, um, to get people more excited and click through. So I thought that was really interesting. Tate, what about you? So I kind of have a different approach. I don't necessarily give any sort of discount for my deal of the week. Um, is discount. That's kind of the bonus that you get. You get to be part of my deal of the week. And that includes maybe, you know, first right of refusal on a few properties. Um, I don't, I will run specials where maybe we do a, a reduced down payment, but that's not something I do on a weekly or monthly basis by any means. I think that most of my property is already discounted. I'm selling land without a credit check for, you know, in most cases, a few hundred dollars down. That's a pretty big discount in itself. I don't know many other people that do that. So I don't feel the need to give you $500 off or a thousand dollars off. Right. Cause I'm already providing, such a unique um, opportunity for you. And I have no problem selling my deal of the week deals. Yeah, I, I love it. So, you know, Mike and Eric, Tate, would you guys split test a deal of the week? So half the list gets one promotion and half the list gets another promotion and then see which one wins? Yeah, why not? I think Sounds it's a good like a idea. idea. Do, you guys, do you guys do that right now or? I don't right now, but I like the idea. I'm stuck okay. in my ways. I don't do it. I mean, the three of you are so fat and happy. Like to even give you another idea is like, oh, that's that sounds like work, Mark. As an intermittent fast and new headline, a new promotion. <laughs> I don't like fat and happy. I'm an intermittent faster, Mark. You just well, how could? Jeez. I you, I meant that as far as affluent and happy. I, I do split off, test I guess. my my headlines, but uh, but not necessarily the offer. Okay. All right. Well, we all know because we're all in land moto, Scott does a really unique approach to the deal of the week. Um, yeah, it's sort of a generous approach to it. So it's not just his deal of the week. It's like the members deal of the week. It's like, honestly, it's like the Costco of land. I get excited when I see the deal of the week on land moto, but Scott, what are, what are you doing? What's, if I said to you, Hey, look, 
you can only do one land moto promotion for the year and you can only do, you know, either a low down, a low monthly, a low doc fee or some combination thereof. What would you pick? I'm choosing the low down. I'm, I'm taking the dollar down. Um, and then plus the doc fee because it does me no good to have a property in my inventory that is not producing money every month. And so essentially that's the way I look at it is look, even if I have to do it for a dollar down or $79 down something, you know, I don't necessarily need to like mess with the price as much because people typically people don't care so much about the overall price. Uh, especially when you're doing owner financing where they care about that is where you're starting to get cash, you know, like, you know, obviously the lower the price of the, the land for a cash deal, the better. So like if you could pop something for a thousand dollars, beautiful. But you know, if you paid a thousand dollars for the land, trying to sell it for a thousand dollars, obviously doesn't make any sense. So I would rather go for like the dollar down or the lower, lower down payment simply because in later months I can, I can just start reaping the cash flow from it. Yeah, Tate is shaking his head. Tate, is that your preferred method? Yeah, I mean, the goal here is to get people uh, under contract and making making monthly payments. So whatever it takes, I agree with Scott. Eric, how about you? Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you can start collecting money on a property today versus six months from now, I mean, you're far better off even if you take a dollar down. Yeah, Mike? Uh, I would never disagree with my big brother in land investing. I mean, is that just the fear of the mini bat talking or is it, do you really feel that way? I really feel that way. I wouldn't disagree with him. He's typically spot on when it comes to land investing. But Sometimes Mark, I, f I find myself agreeing with Scott out of fear. <laughs> can, can I say I one thing though? Like I do think there's a time and a place for like a $1 down, but that doesn't mean every property you sell. No, you, no, you can't, right? you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because, because then they'll be deal fatigue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like black Friday, man, $1 down. Like, but if you're Cyber doing it every single week, if you're doing a dollar down every single week, well then it loses its impact, right? Like you might have success and then it, it comes back down again. So you really, you really have to like change it up. But I think that there's this, there's this belief that oh, I got to discount it. You don't have to discount it, but you know what? I, and I got this from uh, Mike Zano's other big brother in land business. And you know, what, what I learned from him was, see, we all learn from each other, right? What I learned from him is, and Mike actually kind of mentioned this too, is the people on my buyers list, I'm going to cherish them, right? Like those are the people that have entrusted me with their email address. So I'm going to make sure that big brother to them or, you know, like uncle Scott in the land business always looks out for them. So I don't, go and lower my price on Craigslist or I don't go lower my price somewhere else before I take it to them, my buyer's list. And I'm like, listen, here's the deal. I've got too many of these. I messed up, right? Like I, I, I bought too many of these things. Therefore you get to win. And so what I would do is I would lower my price, not to the external market, like Craigslist, Land Moto, whatever in the market, I would first lower my price to my own buyer's list. And I'm like, listen, if you go look anywhere else, even on my website, this thing is listed for you know $10,000, but because you're in my VIP club or whatever you wanna call your group, man, I'm, I'm looking out for you. I'm gonna offer you $2,500 off the property. So if you're gonna do that, don't go and affect the whole market. You know, like we, you know, we, we saw one guy that was literally selling 40 acre properties for cash for like what, just like for a wholesale price. So he's going out to Craigslist saying, oh, buy these 40 acre properties for, you know, $6,000. And we're like, what are you doing? What are, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? He's like, well, that's not my terms price. That's my cash price. Well, then why not take that to your buyer's list and like leave the market where it is, take it to your buyer's list and like hit them. Like, boom, you guys got cash and get this wholesale. So you, to me, you want to cherish those people that are on your list. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think, you know, from a technical, you know, point of view, you know, we were talking before the podcast, some people haven't even signed up for one of these, uh, you know, email service providers or email or ESPs, right? Like a, like a get response or a, you know, constant contact, a Weber, um, you know, Eric and Scott use a fancy one. What's your, which, which one do you guys use? 
convert kit convert kit for the super geeky among us that you know like that but um what's great about those email service providers is you can see in real time your analytics you see your open rate you can see the deliverability of that email and and then you can segment it so in within your buyers list right so these are people that have already bought from you well maybe you have a whale right then you give us sort of this even more granular buyers list where you give them the best deals or maybe you show them just Arizona properties or Texas properties or you know for the um, you know the Grateful Dead list just the Colorado properties right so it, it you can even segment it even further which um, there is a happy medium there because you can go crazy with it too. And then you spend all day on a deal of the week and, and actually not send it out, which isn't good either. So I thought it was a good topic. Is there anything else you guys want to mention about the deal of the week discount, Tate? Well, I would just say more than anything about a discount, just, just send out your deal of the week. I think that's the most important thing. Just get it done. Just get it done. Yeah. Eric? Um, is it worthwhile to mention the tools we're all using? We've mentioned ConvertKit and, and some of the email marketing platforms. Yeah, absolutely. What do so you um, I think I pretty much use all the same tools more or less that Tate uses. I use ConvertKit. I know that's different, but um, Animoto for video content, uh, lead pages for an actual landing page for the deal of the week. And uh, Geek Pay for the down payment. Yeah, geekpay.io. By the way, if you want to sign up for Geek Pay right now, just go to landgeek.com forward slash Geek Pay. You can do the automated subscription or the manual subscription. See how I snuck that in? That was good. That's good marketing right there. You can learn a lot about marketing just by listening to the podcast because we're being helpful, but we're also generating interest in services. Um, Mike Zano, any final takeaways on, on the deal of the week? No, I thought that was a great topic. And uh, I think uh, Cherish is, is, is going to now be fully associated with deal of the week. I heard Scott say it a few times. I love that. Cherish. You've got, yeah, you've got a Cherish. Yeah, you've got to cherish the one. I don't know. Well, I think it's interesting, Scott. Like, how do you, how do you not cherish the list? What would you do to, to burn out the list? Like, what would that look like? Well, I think if you're like, if you're, uh, you know, if you're abusing the list, I like, you know, email them three times a day to me, that's kind of abusing the list. I don't really think that there's a problem with emailing them more frequently than what we do. Um, because I think that people kind of take that chair. So they're like, Oh man, maybe I'm going to email them once a, once a month, which is a terrible idea because people are going to forget who you are. You got to show up every week at a minimum, if not more. Um, and I, I, I really think that what you have to do is you have to bring value to their inbox. So, you, you know, like Mark, I know like you, you've heard the stat of, hey, let's go and produce some general content, you know, four times a week and then sell to them twice a week or some, something like that. I don't do that. What I do though is I kind of take that approach of if I'm going to hit your inbox, I'm bringing you some deal, some value, some, some economic value. It doesn't always have to be like, Hey, here's a tip you can use to, to, to like buy land. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to let them know that, Hey, I'm in your inbox again and you should open it because it's a good deal. If you, if you are in fact looking for land and if you're not, I'm okay with you unsubscribing. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, that brings us now to one of our favorite segments, the tip of the week where we vacillate between Eric, the technician, Peterson, and the Zen master, Mike Zano. Take it away, Eric. Giving the tip of the week, but clearly Mike knows it's his turn this week. <laughs> and he tried to preempt it. All right. So I do have a quote of the week and it's from my, it's, uh, it's not a Zen quote, but it's for someone that uh, I, you know who I love out there, who I listen to around the clock on Audible, because it, it's the book so long that it never ends, uh, Ray Dalio. Uh, it just never ends. The gift that never stops giving. I, I, the guy's phenomenal. I'm sorry. I just, anyway, um, I got a simple quote from him. 
And I think this pertains to the business, particularly people, particularly people who are thinking about getting involved with the business, right? That are maybe listening to these podcasts or, you know, have done some research, listen, you know, and they're on the, you know, they're on the edge. They're ready to join, but they're not sure. So um, the quote from Ray Dalio is uh, listening to uninformed people is worse than having no answers at all. So if you're thinking about doing this and you start running around work, asking friends, asking people in your family, this is a very interesting niche, right? There's not a lot of us that do this, right? And there's basically nobody that can teach it the way we do. So you're not going to find a lot of answers from the general public. So if you're going around and saying, hey, I'm thinking about investing in, in raw land and, and making some passive income, you might as well be talking like another language to people, right? They're going to be like, what? What are you talking about? Like, it's not going to make any sense. It's not going to help you. So I would suggest that you talk to one of us, right? Schedule a call myself, Scott, uh, Scott Bossman. Uh, and let us talk to you about it because this is something that not only do we do well, we do extremely well, uh, all of us here. And um, so don't listen to uninformed people. If you're thinking about doing this, get the facts because there there are some real answers to, to what we do and how we do it. Yeah, I, I love that quote where, you know, if everyone thinks you're crazy, you're onto something. Yeah. And that's like a Silicon Valley sort of, you know, thing as well. It's like, well, not, now I know that, you know, this is worth exploring because everyone thinks it's nuts. Right. Um, so maybe, you know, that could be a good litmus test too. If you're at the water cooler and you say, hey, I'm thinking about investing in land. And everyone's <laughs> like, land? <laughs> okay. Then you schedule a call. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn it's more. Proof of how tight our niche is. That nobody knows about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the fact that, um, you know, Scott and I turned out multiple offers a week to go on HGTV and start Flip This Land show. Really shows how, how you know, niche this is. How come you don't show that at boot camp anymore, Scott? Do you? Did I see it this year? Did I miss it? Yeah, that, yeah, we, we showed it. played it? Oh, yeah. I missed it. Oh, that's one of the favorite parts of boot camp, other than Mark's opening line, which I won't give away. San, San Antonio boot camp's coming up. <laughs> You want to, if you want to be part of this, this, this special weekend, January 10th through 13th, sign up at thelandgeek.com forward slash bootcamp as well. Although the Chevy Chase one's pretty memorable too. I don't know. I, there, there's Mike, you're giving away all the boot camps. They don't know what I'm saying. I'm just giving them, I'm trying to attract them to the boot camp. Boot camp's amazing. Scott didn't even hear me. He, it's okay. It's good. I've heard you, man. Like, <laughs> He's just tuning oh. me out. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, man. Well, I do want to thank all the listeners and to steal a word from Scott Todd. We do cherish you. We do value you. And ultimately, we hope that even though we're having a good time on the Roundtable podcast, Mike and Scott have a good time on the nightcaps. I always quote Mike, you know, we take our business very seriously. Ourselves, not so much. And certainly, um, if you want to help us, please just do us a little favor. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. So please do that. Um, gentlemen, are we good? We're good. We're good. We're good. All it's right. Quick, short, fast. How do we do this? Short and sweet. You know, it's, it's, it's commute time. You know, after, once you get over 30 minutes, that commute's usually over. Oh, I meant the ending last week. I think we well, the last time it was kind of. Oh, 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 ball, yeah, yeah. Bouncing ball, but the bouncing ball went a little. I, I, I'm so confused. Okay, Eric, do you want you want to lead us with this? Get the guitar out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, don't mince words. No, seriously. Okay, ready. I One, two, three. Let's Let breathe. Freedom ring. Perfect. That was actually really harmonized. It, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. By the way, when's the last time you guys listened to the Lang Geek song? Oh, geez. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Is that how you wake up? Yeah, how morning? it goes. I thought, yeah, I, I have it on a loop. I go to bed to it. Uh, so you're gonna you're gonna drive Tate Tate off the off the call. He's gonna hang yeah, out. Yeah, I gotta go, guys. I got a hard stop. I'll see you next week. If you want to make a bear, uh, uh, the art of it, as the income podcast is funny. I don't even remember the rest. No, I do, but I don't want to sing. Aileen's got a good voice. Oh. <laughs>
Scott, Scott, Scott went, went dark. Down. He went totally dark. It's silent protest. Unbelievable. <laughs> no comment. All right. Well, if you don't know what we're talking about, go to soundcloud.com forward slash the land, the land geek. If we got the uh, song in there. It's also on the official Motivation Wealth Group. Um, it's, it's running on a constant loop in my home. So, all good. Are your kids like walking to the dinner table singing that song yet? Oh, yeah. They're constantly humming it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Is that their ringtone too? Not a like, bad idea. Actually. You call them, it should be the ringtone, right? You should yeah. make it a downloadable ringtone for everyone. Oh uh, yeah. You know what? That is that is smart. You should you should be when you go to a coffee place, you should have one of the kids going first, turn on the phone and play it on the speaker, and then you walk in. Ooh. Ooh. Here he comes. The people are looking. It's pretty good. You should also carry around photos of yourself that you can sign and just give <laughs> just here, I saw you looking. Here you go. You're welcome. I could there pay you, you or I could sign this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Either way, you're getting one of these. <laughs> uh, look, what Mark needs is he needs business cards with his picture on it like this. Is that your picture? No. Oh. No. It's, it's our pretend money. I mean, it's oh, our... Oh, yeah. I, I mean, but, yeah. Could you just imagine like walking through town and you're like, oh, you're homeless? Here. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to make money. Right? And they're going to be like, oh, man, this dude gave me $50. What the heck? When the kids are tagging outside the, the, the uh, market, you know, outside the grocery stores, here you go, kids. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, had some, yeah. I had my son do some work for me. I told him, like, I'll give you 50 bucks. He's like, okay, great. So he does it. He's like, I did it. Where's my 50 bucks? I'm like, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's like, <coughs> no, that's not real money. I'm like, did I promise real money or did I say $50? Like, right. what's the difference between this and that? Like, it's a valuable lesson. It's it right. Valuable. Better, even better. more valuable is that money isn't even real. It's just an idea. That's right. It's crazy. You know is, but land is real. Getting it's deep. Like, getting very deep here. I'm, I'm, I'm deeding off my kids property instead of giving them a, a, uh, <laughs> a, a weekly allowance. I'm like, that's not real. Is this man, the time? That, when- listen, man, Mark, that's really the best idea, man. Like, you, you leave nothing to them in cash. You just give them all land, and like, they they have to you teach them how to fish, man. Like, exactly, eye. absolutely. I mean, you know, they may hate me personally, but I feel like I'm doing something. Yeah. You know, long term as a good dad, right? Yeah, as long, they, they they could just go wholesale it somewhere. Well, I, I know Zena would buy it. Of course, he will. Yeah, I have a whole list of people that, that would buy the wholesale property. It's like Zeno and then Zeno and then Zeno. And then after that, you know, it's like Fuck. this whole list. It's like, Fuck. unless, unless <laughs> Eric gives you some of that Colorado property, don't, don't wholesale to Eric. No country for old men. There's a reference there. Backpack full of money. Exactly. A satellite phone going in. <laughs> Exactly. All right. I can see Tate's getting hungry. All right. Thanks. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody. Talk to you later. Thanks.